Welcome back. Hey, folks. There is some stuff we can still do in town, kind of some kind of running around to do. But for the most part, we're going to be heading straight to this undead settlement today. She was already dead. Heavens. And a most for the pile. Poor Gree Rat. Mm. There are some good emotes in this series. Some very silly ones on occasion. I really wish that there was a different activation trigger for the uh, debug mode because it's it's bound to select. Oh. So if I want to use an emote, I have to like rapidly press select until I can see the damn uh, menu. Hmm. That is a little inconvenient. Just a little. Ah, uh, the good old carvings. Hello. I'm glad they're available from the start. <laughs> I think that's about all the damage we can do, so let's level up, I guess. The goal this time is to get 20 endurance and 20 dexterity. Pretty reasonable. I know I said I was doing a strength build, but I need 20 dexterity to wield uh, the very last gun I'm ever going to get in this game. Okay. A gun I cannot actually get until I've beaten the last boss of the game. Oh. Uh, that's a bit of a ways away then. Oh, hello. Yeah. Got a friend. Uh, memories. Yeah, I see what you mean about them uh, just block uh, piercing shields. Yeah, sniper bolts are insanely good. And if I didn't have them, it would just... It would just be me spamming my attack at them and they would just deal no damage and it would take forever. Yeah, it, this sounds like definitely the better option for all involved. And you can see the effects of the Curse of Beckoning, or whatever you want to call it, straight away. Because there's a bunch of dogs. Mm -hmm. We're just going to leave them alone, probably. I, re I recorded this like six days ago. I don't remember what I do. <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those dogs. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're gonna. Oh, hello there. Yeah, I got Solaire off camera, by the way. And he is a thousand percent more aggressive than either the than Wolf or uh, Herbert or whatever it was. Mhm. Mm Pity it doesn't uh, bring over his old animation. Unfortunately not. I wish that he did the save the or uh, praise the sun emote. <laughs> now this is new. I this is my first time doing the undead settlement as uh, with the curse of whatever. Oh, okay. There's just a bunch of live pilgrims here. Oh, huh, that's very odd. It took me a minute to realize what I was seeing. <laughs> That is a, quite a lot of them. Do they... Yeah, it is. ...do anything? I think they're passive towards you, but Solaire is bloodthirsty. Hmm. I'm not sure they even have an attack. Oh, they have an attack. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you see Solaire going flying. <laughs> I'm just going full auto. <clears throat> When in doubt, burn it all to the ground. I love explosive ammo. Jesus Christ. That's a slaughter. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, this is a preview of what the rest of the game's gonna be like. Solaire's going to attack stuff and I have to clean up his messes. <laughs> That is the problem with AI. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> real. I real have no clue what that was, time. but that looked good. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what that miracle's called. And we can sequence break here. Okay. Oh. Oh, you're in this spot. Because if you look back behind that dragon, that's just where we were. Oh yeah, fair enough. So I like to run through here and grab the, uh, the ashes that let me buy large shards. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I almost forgot this area existed. Yeah. It's kind of a an obscure area. I don't, well, I guess I don't want to say obscure, but you have to go up, like, extremely long ladder and then up an elevator, and then you have to platform over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just completely had forgotten about it. Rip. Did I just knock him through the world? I think that was Salam, but it's... yeah, he definitely fell through the world. That's awesome! <laughs> Clipping it through the floor is always funny. Well, except when you have it saved, but you know. I don't think that's a problem in Dark Souls. Thankfully not. There used to be a mimic over there, but no longer. Hmm, who's this for? There's actually a lot of mad phantom MP enters now. It's weird. Hmm. Because the base game had like, what, two maybe? Yeah, I don't know if even that, because I, I can only think of the one guy who can show up in like three or four different spots. Oh, Gargoyle Shield. Forgotten Lachlan. Hmm. It was nice to meet him, I guess. Hmm. The Mad Phantoms are a weird idea. Like, just the whole... When they're NPC invaders, they're just red phantoms by another color, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, like, the whole concept is like, oh, you're supposed to help the person until you can eventually turn on them and kill them. But yeah, most mostly they're just more red phantoms. Probably very difficult to program in to be fair. Hmm. And nobody will trust you no because they know what you're going to do eventually. Yeah, if you see an a message that someone's invaded, it don't matter if you're a player or an NPC, you're not going to trust them. Mm-hmm. I think if you're using regular bolts, it's possible to break this, hit this guy with enough blunt damage that you just break his legs. Oh, that's right. I, that is something you can do to these enemies. But the sniper bolt just deals so much piercing damage that you're just not, it's not going to happen. Hmm. Alright, the speckled ring. Not a terribly good useful good ring. Yeah, not bad. And the demon cell, we are not going to need anything that we can make from that, so that's just a free, I think, 10,000 souls for using it. 
nice. Uh, that's right, this is a lift down. This is above Farron Keep. We probably will not be here for... Oh god... Six, eight, maybe ten videos. It'll be a very long time. Because I'll have to do the Cathedral of the Deep before I go to Farron Keep. There, there is a lot to do in some of these areas, depending on how thorough you want to be. I'm always very thorough. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little secret I picked up. Shoot the, the illusory wall from behind. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like this covenant, but it is, um... It has an unfortunate little quirk. Where you never get summoned for it? Well, there's a reason for that. Well, aside from the fact that not many people are in the zone that you can be summoned into, but uh, apparently once you own a single piece of equipment that is above a certain threshold, uh, I think it's if you make a certain if you something can be up to plus five. As soon as it goes over plus two, you get put into a different summoning bracket. Oof. So you're no longer attacking the people who are in this area normally. You're probably attacking the people that are in here the second playthrough. It's so weird that they chose to break that up because. I think that's like a problem with what was it? What was it? The th the, the games thread says like mm. by the time you finish the catacombs, you should have a weapon at plus five. And it's like, good lord, we have a. a I know this is centers, but our crossbows at like plus six right now. Hmm. But yeah, I I think I don't know what the threshold is for a regular weapon that can go to plus ten, but I found that found out that restriction the hard way because I made a character specifically to play around with this covenant, got the sword that I wanted and accidentally upgraded it too far so I never got summoned. Oh no. It takes for fucking ever to farm those items too because you have, it drops from like, in all of Fair and Keep there, I think there's five enemies that can drop uh, the upgrade material and it's an extremely rare drop. Oof. So it's like 12 fucking straight hours of farming just to get the shield and the sword and whatever. Mm. Yeah, some of the covenants uh, in the base game could definitely have used a bit more work. That's not even getting into, what is it, the Aldrich Faithful or the, the Dark mm. Moon Knights or whatever they want to call them? Yeah. But not talking about the <laughs> amount of silver knights I have to kill. Nobody wears the, uh... The Way of the Blue or whatever they want to call them. Mm-hmm. At least in this game, you, uh... You just get all the items from anything, because... You've got those, uh... Clan tokens or whatever that are equipped. Uh, the ritual incense we've been picking up is the covenant item for summoners. By the way, where is Solaire? Oh. Guess he got <laughs> bored. Yeah. I cannot get over just how bloodthirsty he is. <laughs> it's the greatest <laughs> thing. Just fucking charge it in there. He gives no fucks. Well, he doesn't seem to have his shield anymore, so... I don't think he needs it. Hmm. Not with the amount of damage he's doing, either. Jeez. I think I read that summons their wep their stats and their damage output scales to where you what zone you're in. That sounds reasonable. 
Which does bring up questions regarding the Dancer of the Boreal Valley, but mm. I haven't, I didn't have any troubles when I took Solarian when I did it last time. Mm-hmm. Did that say snail shell? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's a snail shell. Okay then. There are some weird items, and I love them. Yeah, it's always better when uh, mods and original creations don't take themselves too seriously. I know players want to look as weird as possible, so they just embrace it. Hmm. There's. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are some good fan games and stuff that are actually quite serious. But. More often than not, you know, a little bit of humor helps. Was this say give give your players the ability to dress up clothes? The first thing they're gonna do is take them off. <laughs> that sounds right. Anyway, last time we were in the undead summit, we went to the across that bridge back there. Now we're going down this way. Okay. Go Slayer. <laughs> there I go. I did not intend to fall down that hole. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people have accidentally fallen down that one because of those two little jumpy shits. It's better than getting ambushed by them from above. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how that one, uh... That one box is so much lighter than everything around it. The fuck is he shooting at? I think sometimes Solaire just imagines enemies so he can fire bolts at them. Yeah. Are you shooting at one of these prison uh, things up here? Jesus Christ. <laughs> You, uh, you reminded me of a game that somebody showed off a little while back uh, about you being a spider exterminator. My god. And yes, one of the options is just to fucking douse the room in fire. <laughs> <laughs> Take off and nuke the site from orbit. <laughs> That old pygmy brooch is actually one of the more interesting rings because it makes shields extremely viable. Okay. So while we have a shield on our left hand, that's just so I don't punch the air and fall off the cliff again. <laughs> Fair enough. Because that's happened a bunch of times on recording. <laughs> Yeah, that's extremely fair. As, as soon as I get the Grass Crest Shield, I am going to equip that and pretty much nothing else but that. It's definitely one of the more handy shields. Because it used to be in uh, Crucifixion Woods, but it's somewhere else now. I don't know where. Okay. Air. Uh, I forgot exactly how goddamn long the range on that spell is. Yeah, I don't think it stops. <laughs> Show that rock. <laughs> don't take no for an answer. He's entertaining, at least. <laughs> he never stops being entertaining. Just always look over to the side, and he's off charging off to, like, Don Quixote. <laughs> never stops tilting at windmills.
I like how they hid that prisoner between the two cages. <laughs> Usually that uh, woman there drops something, but today she didn't. Oh yeah, that sounds vaguely familiar. Just a ring increases luck by five. Uh, Hardrick, yeah, he's. At least he's still here as normal. I would feel upset if he did, if he wasn't. <laughs> Everybody remembers Hodrick. Hey, you can you can use warmth all you like. It's not going to help. It really is surprisingly durable for somebody who turns up here. He loves to spam his damn Estus. And when you can't just pierce his shield, it's actually really infuriating to fight him. Mm-hmm. A lot of regular Titanite shards. We're way past that point. I think most regular builds I've done, I just immediately equipped the Thieves Pact and never looked back. <laughs> now you cleared one or two zones with that sucker, you have enough Titanite Shards to last you three playthroughs. Assuming you don't go too crazy with your passion. Even then, I mean, like, it's not uncommon if with a, in a Thieves Pact playthrough just to hit 99. It starts, it starts discarding them after a point. <laughs> You've got that many time dice shards, you just don't need any more. It may as well just say, here's an infinite amount. That great machete reminds me of one of my big complaints of the series past one. And what they did to d Sad. great weapons. Turn everything into crushing damage? Well, no, it was the way that they aim. Like, um... So, in the first game, you know, you push the button to attack, it swings it forward. In subsequent games, you push the button to attack, it swings it whatever direction your control stick is pointing. Oh, that's right. If you were swinging while strafing around an enemy, and you hadn't fully let go of the control stick, you probably s swerved 90 degrees and smacked nothing. <laughs> 